Welcome to a Life of Freedom podcast, your source of inspiration and information on how and why you should choose to pursue your own happiness, pursue your passion, and design a life that fulfills you and makes it your own. And now here's your host, Ayesh LKZ. This is the episode 10 of season 2. Today we are talking with Will Moore, business owner, podcast host, and an expert in gamification of habits. Let's get to the show. Before we start, I would like to talk about WISE, formerly known as TransferWISE. Receive money directly to your account with zero fees, wherever you are in the world. Hold and convert money to over 40 currencies instantly in your account and get a debit card to spend in any currency, all with Twice's low and transparent fees. Try it out from my affiliate link below with no additional cost to you. And now back to the podcast. So, uh, Will, it's great to meet you. It's nice, it's nice to have you here. Uh, like, tell nice us, to like, be here. Uh, so, like, tell us who, who you are and what you do, uh, first of all. So, uh, yeah, I've been um, kind of been all over. I had a tough, I had a tough childhood uh, where I, I had my parents divorced early. My mom was an alcoholic. She was physically abusive. Uh, My dad left to go on a trip around the world when I was about five or six. Um, And we were living, we were actually living in Hawaii. My parents were hippies. They were stationed there. And then we moved, when my dad left, we moved to go to go to Washington, D.C. to be closer to my grandparents to get support. And I just never really felt like I fit in and just kind of just I was super emotional and super sensitive kid. And I just had a lot of problems. And fast forward, bottom line, by the time I got to. Uh, college, I was basically like suicidal. And I was like, I don't want to live. Life sucks. What am I here for? Like my brain is broken, kind of your typical victim mentality. And then I serendipitously discovered a book from one of my professors that helped me to sort of change my start to change my mindset. It didn't happen overnight, but it's, you know, here we are 25 years later. And it was called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Great book. I would recommend to anybody. I've read it multiple times since then. And it just sort of showed me that there's these universal principles in life and we all have the same kind of thoughts, fears, hopes, dreams. And, you know, it, it, we all have, we all ha- have individual ones, but we all share that primal sort of that's who we are as humans. And I was determined to kind of figure out what was going to make me happy and uh, how to succeed. And at the time I thought it was money <laughs> that would make me happy. So I kind of put everything into becoming an entrepreneur and becoming uh, successful uh, monetarily. Yeah. And uh, that went, uh, so I built a bit, I built a couple businesses. One was a real estate business where I started buying houses and renting them out. And the other one was a restaurant delivery service. So it's like, yeah. a, I don't know, do you guys have Uber Eats or Delivery yeah, Hero? Yeah, we have, uh, yeah. We have Uber Eats and another company. Another yeah. So basically that was our business. I started way before those guys. Um, you know, we, me and a couple of my business partners, we started it together and we built it up and we were, you know, doing it the slow and easy way. And then these guys came around about six or seven years ago and they really made it difficult for us because they were just spending so much money and we couldn't really compete. So I sold my business in 2019 And along the way, I've been sort of leveling up my life and improving different areas of my life. I I call my five cores, um, which are your mindset, your career and your finances, your relationships, your physical health, and your emotional health and giving back. And what I realized after I sold my business was how, you know, the the most important business you're ever going to run is your life. It's not just the financial and career part that's important and money's important. But it's not everything, and it's how you're making the money. It's how uh, what your business is doing. If you're giving back to the world, you know, kind of at the end of the day, as you start to get older, especially when you have kids, you realize you know life is about uh, what you can give back, and the more you give, the happier and the better you feel. So I kind of dedicated my life to essentially helping people to build these habits in each of these cores. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about like you know five core model. Like so, you know, uh, like you know, can you like go through them 
and like you know tell like you know how do you come up with like just five and like why is it important so right i struggled to, to make it five uh, i finally figured it out but for a while it was like seven and i was like there's seven's just too many so i i wanted it to be three but it's not possible to do in three because yeah. Yeah. i wanted to simplify it so that it was digestible for people and it didn't feel overwhelming uh, so these five areas, right? Your mindset, it's, that's probably, that's the most important of all the course. Basically you got to start working on that first. And once you get your mindset headed in the right direction, the other cores become increasingly easier to build yeah. momentum yeah. and improve in, uh, your mindset is basically it's, it's your attitude. It's your perception. It's how confident you are. It's it's knowing that you have everything within you to kick ass and take names. I call it a, a growth owner versus a fixed victim like I was in college when I was suicidal, which is somebody that says, my brain is broken. Uh, I'm never going to m- amount to anything. I don't know why I bother trying. I might as well just you know end it here. Or maybe I'll hit the lottery one day, kind of hoping that an external force is going to make your life happy versus you know this growth owner that says, all right, Let's go. I got everything within me. I got strengths. I got weaknesses just like everybody else. Everybody's got their own. I'm going to focus on my strengths, harness them, and become bigger, better, faster, stronger every single day. So that's that's the big one. That's mindset. That's your first core. Then the next is your career and your finances, which we kind of talked about. Again, it's not about just making money. It's how you're... It's are you enjoying the ride? Yeah. Are you giving back? You know, is it a conscious... Um, you know, there's this new concept that I really like, which is what is it? Uh, conscious capitalism. Okay. So, which is basically like you're making money, but not just for the shareholders, but for everybody. And you're improving the world. You're improving everybody's lives by what you're doing. So, to me, that's kind of the focus and and for for the career and finance core and and growing your wealth incrementally, understanding how to get your money working for you and having it grow on its own versus people just working for their money and they earn money, then they spend it, they earn it, they spend it, but instead getting it working for you passively to compound over time. Yeah. Uh, so I'll pause there. So those are the first two cores. Do you have any questions about either of those? Uh, no, uh, we will continue with those. Uh, so, okay, like, uh, can you tell, like, any anything that people can do to, like, uh, like improve on those things, like, you know, basic, simple things uh, to improve like habits within those. Yeah. So it's all yeah. about stopping your failure habits within each of those and replacing them with success habits. So for the mindset, I would say your, your, your most important thing is basically for me anyways, uh, my number yeah. one uh, habit that I work on, I've come up with an acronym, uh, uh, an acronym. It's called C B R P. And what it what that stands for is when you start to have, we all have these millions of thoughts going through our head every day. And it, what are we putting our time and focus on, right? And so yeah. I think a lot of us, what happens is we get these negative thoughts that come in and we nurture them and we give them energy and we allow them to grow versus cut them off at the, at the root and pivot to something else. So the CBRP, C stands for catch. And again, this is a habit just like anything else. It's not going to happen overnight. But what I was able to do is start to develop this habit of catching when the, when the thought would come in, catching myself. Then the B is for breathe. Just kind of yes, taking yeah. a 10,000 10, step foot back, taking a deep breath. And then the R is for remind and reflect. And it's like, okay, what is this thought? Like, is this thought have any merit? Does it have any credibility? Is it real? Like is me dwelling on this and, and going to make it worse. And then the, the most important part is the P for pivot. Yes. So you say, okay, what can I do? Okay. And sometimes something bad happens or you fail and there's nothing you can do other than, well, you can learn the lesson. So there's always, I guess, something you can do or like how to not do that next time. But a lot of times there's an actual action you can take right then and there to improve your situation. And I think that's the key that people miss is they, you know, they, they just get, they get, they dwell and they get caught up in these negative thoughts and bad things that happen. And then they don't actually take any action on it. And then it just makes it compounds and makes it worse. So the P is for pivot and you say, okay, like, so for instance, if, um, you know, you're, you're, 
you've got money in the stock market and it's just going straight down, right? You can sit, sit around and think about it all day and dwell on it. Or, you know, you could say, okay, what's going on in the market? What's, what, what's take my emotions out of it. What's the smart play to do? Like, you know, okay, the economy, the next six months, 12 months doesn't look so great. Maybe I take some money out. I let it sit on the side and then I'll be ready and I'll be patient for when I can, the things start to turn around and I can buy and I can come back in or, you know, that's just an example versus, you know, just sitting around being like, oh God, I hope it comes back. You know, I'm losing all my money. So, you know, that's CBRP, catch, breathe, remind and reflect and pivot. And by the way, the, for the R, remind and reflect, uh, one, yeah. one thing I forgot to say is you want to remember what you're grateful for as well. So because okay, you yeah. start to get all doom and sure. gloom, but you say, oh, I've got this going for me. I got this. I got all these great things. Like, there's no reason to be unhappy. So we'll go with the, like, the third goal and the rest and all the, like, you know, failure habits and successful habits. Uh, yeah. So, right. Um, so, right. So then that the, the uh, 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 habit for career and finances um, would be, I, I'd say my biggest habit that I've developed is persistence. Yes. Um, any, any, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I, I teach entrepreneur, help people how to kind of grow their own business. And, and again, your life is the most important business you'll ever run, which is why you have your five cores of your life. And you need to treat that like a business as well. And if you learn to, to do that, then that, that, that can translate over to your regular business as well. And the, the key is come up with something. It doesn't have to, you don't, don't try to make something perfect. Just MVP, minimal viable product. If you have a good idea, start testing it, seeing if it works, seeing how people respond to it. And, and if, if it seems to have some legs, then just keep going and don't give up and don't get, dis- don't get distracted and don't let those thoughts come in that say, this isn't good enough. You're not going to make it because that's what 99% of people do. And it's the people that push through that that are the ones that end up being successful. Okay. So like the third core, uh, let's talk about like the physical health. Third core is physical health. Yep. Um, so that's your, your sleeping, your eating habits, your physical exercise, you know, everything related to the physical body, um, which also ties to your brain, of course. And so it's, it's super important to take care of that. You know, we all have habits. We all have eating habits. We have exercise habits, or maybe your habit is that you don't exercise. <laughs> Right. And so to me, it's about sort of tricking your brain and having fun, trying to figure out how to develop a habit that is not so hard for you in particular. Yeah. Like, so for instance, exercise. Uh, I love playing tennis. I love playing basketball. Uh, so I'm, I've joined um, some leagues. We call them leagues here in the US where I, I play with other individuals and I, I play for fun. And when I'm exercising, it doesn't even feel like exercise because there's the social connectivity yes. aspect of it. There's the competition. Uh, you know, I'm having fun. I'm, I'm, I'm not even thinking about working out. And so to me, that, those are the ways that you want to, you know, you want to, I call it gamification. You want to gamify your habits. You want to actually trick your brain into wanting to take the habit. And another example with eating would be, you know, there's so many different foods to choose from. We're so lucky. You know, 100 years ago, it was like, you didn't have a lot to choose from. It was like, you know, you got what you got. And now there's a zillion choices. There's no excuse to eat unhealthy because there's so many things that taste good to you individually that are healthy. Right. And so you just got to keep, again, minimal viable product, keep testing different things, seeing what you like for me, mixed nuts, mixed like uh, peanuts and almonds and pecans and cashews. I buy this thing at, at Costco, which is this wholesale store, this huge thing. And it lasts me like three months. And whenever I want a snack or I get hungry, I just grow, I go and I eat those and it's guilt-free. I know that it's good for me versus, you know, grabbing Doritos or Oreos or cookies, you know, or, or, or these things that are bad for you, which is, again, it's a habit just like anything else, but habits don't care. This is the key. Habits don't care if they're good or bad, helping or hurting you. Either way, okay, they're yeah. going to compound and they're going to do their thing over time. So you can either eat Doritos every time you go for a snack or cookies, or you can eat something healthy. And so it's about you know changing over to that success habit and then letting that compound over time. Okay. Uh, now go for the, like, let's go for the fourth one, the relationships. Relationships is, you know, and I break this down into... 
three different categories, your, your f- colleagues and acquaintances, friends and family, and then your significant other. And with all three of these, you know, there's certain habits that we've developed. It's very easy, especially in this world to, to talk over people. So that just going back to that first book that I ever read, I told you that changed my life, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. The, if I could sum that book up in one sentence, it would be, if you want to never have problems with friends, business, if you want to be like the most popular person ever, there's one way to do it. And if you break this rule, you, you will fail. But if you honor this rule and you really are strict about it, you will, you will do well. And it's make the other person feel important. Okay. You know, make them feel special. Remember people's names. You know, ask them questions. Don't be the one that talks all the time, although that's what I'm doing. But I guess this is my role on this show. Yeah. Um, you know, but if you and I were having a conversation, I would be I would be stopping and asking you lots of questions. It's it's become a habit. It's become just part of who I am to make sure that, you know, different ways of making the other person feel important. And one of the, like I said, the number one best way, remember people's names. It's a simple one. People, the best sound anybody can ever hear is their own name. It's their favorite sound. Uh, and then another good, a good one is, um, to make sure you never interrupt people because when okay. somebody's talking and you interrupt them, it's equivalent to you saying, Hey, stop talking. What I have to say is more important than what you have to say. And that's like the okay. worst thing that you can do, but people do it all the time. And, um, and I, I'm even guilty of it sometimes. And sometimes if somebody's talking and I know I have to get something in, I'll be very respectful about it. Like, oh, I'm so, so sorry to interrupt you. I'm totally with what you're saying. I just want to interject real quickly and then let's get back to what you're saying and then make sure when you're finished talking to bring it back to what they're saying. Okay. I think that's a okay. really good advice, you know. Like, so yeah. And the then, fifth, yeah. yeah, fifth is emotional health and giving back. So emotional health is, it's essentially, it's your, uh, you know, are you living life to the fullest or are you always stressed out and worried about things? Are you, are you, do you understand what your passions are and are you expressing those, you know, on a regular basis or are you just, you know, working or spending your life in one other core area and ignoring everything else? So it's kind of the balance aspect of making sure that you're, you're staying balanced and that you are doing the things that you really enjoy. So for me, a good habit with that is to proactively schedule things into your life. Uh, well, first off, you have to have, I have a list of all my passions and my strengths. And um, so I, yeah. I, for passions, I, I try to make sure that I'm incorporating, you know, at least two to three of them regularly. And so I will proact like for, I love playing sports. I love playing basketball. So that's a twofer because I'm getting my physical health core and I'm doing something that I love. And so I will proactively join leagues where it's scheduled every week where I don't even have to think about it, you know, whether it's, you know, going for a morning run every day or, you know, spending time with, with the family or, you know, even if it's a hobby, like um, you like stamp collecting, you know, if that's something you love doing, like, don't just say, oh, I'll do that when I get time, because then you never get time and that time's gone. And then the giving back portion is really just, you know, kind of what I was saying earlier, like, is the world going to be better or worse for having you in it? You know, are you going to be, um, is, is it going to be a situation where when you die, the world goes, hey, we're really glad you were here. You made it us a better place. Thank you. Or is the world going to say to you, F you. You sucked our soul. You were selfish. You cheated people. You were a liar. And uh, we're glad you're gone. So that's like, to me, the most important thing is to, to make sure you're... And it feels... If there's something magical. Like, And it's what I do for a living now. You know, I'm just essentially trying to help people become happy and better people and develop their habits. And there's no better feeling than when I'm working with somebody and I see a change in them. And they're actually improving their lives. I can't even explain it. People will understand. So that's, again, going back to ties to your business, whatever business you end up doing, try to, try to tie that element in. And if it's not part of your business, you know, there's a million things you can do. Even as simple things like holding the door for people, you know, helping out at a charity or something or you know, whatever it is for you that you, you don't mind doing. Or Again, there's things that you, you can combine your passions with, with the giving back to the world portion. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think like we cover like all the basics and uh, like a lot of important stuff. So I think uh, 
Okay, uh, so now, uh, before the final question, so I kind of only have final uh, one final question. Uh, so you can like share all the you know where where can I can I listen us like you know find you. So I can I I actually heard like I actually seen your Chris on your website. You know talk about a bit about your podcast and talk about that. Then we we'll go to the final question. Then it can be done. Yeah. So yeah, my website uh, more momentum m o o r e momentum dot com and yeah, there's a little quiz on there that you can take and it'll essentially it, it'll tell you where you stand in each of your five course it's just a few questions for each for each core and it'll just give you an idea of kind of yeah i think it's really helpful like how I you guide that yeah, was, yeah yeah and then from there i'm i'm developing an app that's going to help yeah, you to act it's going to be really cool it's a gamification aspect and you're going to be a rocket ship and you've got your five cores of your engine, uh, of your rocket, or your life. And in order to break Earth's gravitational pull and get off of the planet, you have to slowly but surely start replacing your failure habits with success habits. And then you hit the first planet, and then you're going off to different galaxies, you're fighting aliens, you're fighting through asteroid fields. It's, it's yeah. going to be pretty cool. So that's coming. Beta is going to come in the next four to six months. So you can sign up on my site for that um, to be notified. And you can be one of the first beta testers. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Okay, uh, yep. so I have one final question. So, what does freedom means to you? Yeah, freedom and happiness. I feel like are pretty close in in meaning, and and I feel like if you're happy, you're free. And freedom means that you are living a life where just all these things I was talking about. You're all five of these cores. You are you're choosing how they go. Yes, and you are the one that's in the driver's seat as a growth owner. And you're not being pulled and tugged by life, but you're you're controlling how things how, how things go. And if you want to build certain habits and you want to become a certain type of person, I have this this um, exercise that I give people. It's called Back to the Future List. It's kind of like going to the end of your life and saying, okay, who do I want to be? What what do I want people to say about me in my funeral in yeah. each of these five course? And it's a really great exercise to cut through all the bullshit and get to the heart of who you are as a person and what's important to you. And then from that, you start building your, your habits. And so freedom to me is understanding where it is you want to head and building your life around being able to do all these things that allow that to happen. Okay, great. So, uh, Will, it's uh, great to have met you. Uh, actually, I uh, talk a bit about your podcast. I was uh, like uh, listening to one or two uh, earlier today. Uh, and it's awesome. like, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. So I right, I have a podcast as well, Gamify Your Habits. Um, so like that's what, on. You can find you, that on. Uh, Apple. Like, what kind of topics you focus on? There? I, I try to interview people that have become experts in their field on yeah. habits and or gamification and and entrepreneurs and people that have succeeded. And I just ask them about the habits that they have developed uh, and how they got there to help other people to try to do the same. Okay. Yeah. Great. So uh, it's really uh, great to uh, it's great to meet you. Uh, so it's like thank you for coming. Uh, it's uh, it's been a great, great session. Fantastic and, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much, Ash. Okay, we'll, okay, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening to our conversation. Don't forget to sign up to ICE if you need to send or receive money from abroad. Please leave a review and subscribe to the show. See you next time.